Good afternoon. I'm going to talk briefly about a few expeditions. First of all, to the North Pole. We head out from uh, northern Canada. Uh, we dragged about 120 kilos each. It's uh, up and down, back and forth, and northwards once in a while. Because all this ice, the Arctic is an ocean circumnavigated circum by continent, as an opposite to the Antarctica, which will come to soon, which is a continent circumnavigated by oceans. Uh, while we're there, it's also expeditions from Canada, Russia, Korea, and England trying to do the same thing, to be ski as the first to the North Pole unsupported. So we start to ski for 17 hours a day. Problem then, of course, you need to sleep, maintain your gear, eat, and repair your gear. So we extend over days from uh, 24 hours to 30 hours. So at a very good speed, very good progress. Uh, the ice was breaking apart. Sometimes there were no ice, and due to it being a competition, we, had, uh, we didn't want to wait until it was freezing, and we had designed the sledges ourselves. You can bind them to get together and use them as a raft. So then we kind of paddling across, and then eventually we got on the other side and could then keep on going. Uh, we hit some more um, heavy duty ice, but after 58 days, we, we got to the pole. And at this stage, we didn't know whether anyone had been there ahead of us because the pole obviously is drifting all the time. But we knew we had done our best and we couldn't have gone there any faster. So we were happy anyway. And of course, five days later, when we were picked up, we were even happier because uh, we were the first after all. After this, I went home and I started dreaming about skiing to the South Pole and the South Pole alone. The last thing I did before I landed with the plane was to take a radio, which the airplane company and my sponsor had forced me to bring. Uh, I took up the radio, took out the batteries, put it in the trash bin because I want to be in total solitude. And here I'm standing at uh, the northern tip of Birken Island in Antarctica and start to ski into this continent, which is Obviously, the coldest place on Earth, the windiest, the sunniest, and actually also the driest place on Earth. However, I got into a very good rhythm. I skied for a few more kilometers a day than I had um, expected. And also, I was good at daydreaming. And um, I didn't speak to myself once. I hardly said one single word during the whole trek. I skied for six days, just looking at the mountains, Got there, it was a bit steeper than I expected. The only thing I forgot on the trip was to bring cr uh, crampoons. So I had a hard, very hard time getting up. I had to leave half my stuff in down on the valley and get up uh, once and get down again. And this air was heavily crevassed. And I had some problems uh, once with a leg into a, uh, a crevasse. And another time I went through a snow bridge and kind of kicking air. Uh, but fortunately, it was uh, a strong, strong snow bridge. Slowly, you learn to appreciate nature, appreciate tiny details more and more. And also, the peace uh, was special uh, when there were no wind and I stopped skiing. It was kind of this unbelievable quietness. And of course, uh, walking on such a trip, uh, many emotions, many ideas, thoughts appear, but you always have this kind of very uh, feeling of being present in the know that the past doesn't matter, the future doesn't matter, the only thing that actually matters is life there and then. And you feel a great feeling of freedom, freedom obviously to follow a dream, uh, but it's also a freedom to take the consequences of your own actions because whatever you do down there has consequences right away. I try to get into routines, so I um, eat the same food every day. Uh, when you start, it doesn't taste that good, but it tastes just better and better. And I also try to get up in the morning at the same time, I try to do two things at the same time all the time in the tent, and I get down the tent at the same time every day, and I ski for two hours, and if I have a 10 minutes break, I quit after eight or nine minutes, so I can take off my parka and start to ski again after 10 minutes because you need all, the, all, all your surplus energy to think about all the matters than, uh, than, uh, than what you can actually settle by routines. After 50 days, or 49 days, um, here I am 
The Americans, they built a base on, on, on the pole itself. And some Americans came out from the base. And they hadn't expected me, of course. No, they, they didn't know I was coming. So they were surprised. And the first thing this American said was, uh, how do you do? <laughs> However, standing here, uh, I already made up my mind to become the first to reach the three poles, North Pole, South Pole, Everest. And at this stage, it was 13 or 15 other people have been to two out of three places. And um, obviously, to be in nature should be more uh, not so competitive, etc. But I think everybody who's doing this kind of stuff, as we talked about earlier today, you have some good reasons for doing it, and you have some bad reasons for doing it. Um, I'm not competitive every day, but on a few matters, I'm very, very competitive. So from there, I went more or less um, as soon as I could to Everest. I'm not going to talk about Everest today because it's hard to compete with everybody else. Um, however, um, I got to the summit. Long time before going on the expedition, there are preparations. And I know by myself that the reason I have reached these goals are not because I'm physically more fit than everybody else, but it has to do with the fact that I have been very good with my preparations. But anyway, uh, some years ago, uh, I got this idea about crossing New York uh, mostly below ground. It's not possible to cross New York uh, below ground the whole way because the tunnels are not interconnected. I went into the sewage. It's really strange going through this because this was built in uh, late 19th century. Um, it's obviously all not made for beauty, but somehow it has become beautiful. We have all this shit going through decades of decades, and you have floods quite frequently, and it's kind of just polished all these bricks, so you get this glow. <laughs> we open a manhole, get up onto the street, close the manhole, and sat down and relaxed a bit. And this is my hat. Uh, as you can see, it's just absolutely soaked with shit. And at this stage, six o'clock in the morning, no place to go and clean yourself. Still has shit in his face from being in the search. And then we took a cab to Brooklyn. Obviously, you have to do this while it's dark also because everything is illegal. Uh, and I made a deal with the New York Times that they could write about it after I had returned back home. We kept on for five days, slept on the ground uh, with our sleeping bags. At least as Norwegian, everything I think as both as beauty, nature, uh, green, you know, nice colors, fresh air, peace, etc. Uh, this is exactly the opposite. But then you get this kind of negative beauty. It was a happy trip, a really happy trip. So, okay, thank you very much.